Hello, hello, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about artists who sold the rights to their music and did sell all or part of their catalogs. And honestly, when I was working on this video, I didn't realize so many artists have done it and not even just the legacy acts. A lot of the younger and more current musical acts have done this as well. So today I want to look at some of the reasons why, because honestly, it's not just music industry stuff. It's not just personal reasons. In some cases, it does have to do with the world outside of the music industry and outside of that artist's life. So I want to break down some of these deals, unpack some of the reasons who these catalogs are being sold to and whether these deals are worth it. So let's go ahead and get into it. A catalog is the collection of songs and compositions made by a specific artist. Songs and compositions don't refer to the actual recording, but instead things like the lyrics, arrangements, compositions, or sheet music if there is any. This is different from the masters or master recordings, which are a collection of the original recordings of songs. This recording refers to what we would colloquially call a song, aka the finished product that you're going to stream on Spotify or hear on a CD. Owning the copyright to a master recording means that that entity can license out the recording to be used in television, film, or other media. Similarly, having rights to a song's publishing entitles the owner to license the song, which remember is not the same as the recording, out for commercial use and earn royalties. If that's confusing, for example, think of like a Taylor's version of a song. It's going to be the same song as the original, but the recording is different. And for a song, there are always two different copyrights. One is for the composition, which is the lyrics, think of the song on paper, and then the other is for the recording of the song, which is what the consumer is going to hear and listen to. If an artist sells their catalog, they're giving up the rights to certain songs or the specific recordings, depending on what they sell and any royalties they could have made on it. Typically, artists don't own their entire catalogs outright, but shares are a portion of it which they might have the chance to sell. Giving up the rights to a song or its composition is what's meant when it's said that an artist sells their publishing rights, their publishing catalog, or their songwriting catalog. Likewise, artists can also choose to sell part or all of their masters, which again refers to the recordings of the songs. This is usually referred to as selling their master recordings, their recorded catalog, or their catalog of recorded music. In recent years, many artists have chosen to sell at least a portion of their music rights because the payout often outweighs whatever royalties they can anticipate to make from their music. Streaming has made it more difficult to accurately pay artists for their work, and overall they're being paid less. A standard major label contract for new artists could see them taking home usually between 10 and 15% of royalties from physical copies sold. For a stream on Spotify, which to be fair is one song versus a body of work, an artist makes three thousandths to five thousandths of a dollar on average. That means it would take 1,000 streams to generate three dollars on the low end and five dollars on the high end, with all of that not even going to the artist as Spotify keeps about 30%. Acts who were in their prime before the streaming era, outside of any classic songs they may have, tend to make less in streaming than contemporary artists, especially considering it's likely not how the bulk of their fan base regularly consumes their music. This is another reason that might make them more likely to sell their catalog and music rights aside from others. In December of 2021, Bruce Springsteen sold his entire back catalog to Sony Music Entertainment for an estimated $550 million. This includes his publishing catalog as well as his master recordings and was the largest sale in history of a solo artist's songs. Some older legacy artists sell their catalogs or music rights later in life, that way they can get one big final payout. Other than selling their catalogs, often their only opportunities to make significant money would be a new album tour, or a hologram, or a farewell tour, which if there's no demand may not be a viable option. According to the New York Times, these catalog deals have been especially attractive to investors, private equity firms, and companies. These companies, quote, lured by the rise of streaming and a promise of growing music revenues for years to come, have poured billions of dollars into buying song catalogs. Simply put, these companies only make or invest in these deals because they believe they'll eventually make more off their royalties than they paid for the catalog. Technically, there is a time window on this as artist copyrights expire 70 years after they die, after which their work enters the public domain. If the work was published before 1978, then the copyright lasts for 95 years after the artist's passing. Other than Springsteen, artists including Bob Dylan, Stevie Nicks, and Shakira have all sold parts or all of their music rights. In 2020, Bob Dylan sold the publishing rights to his catalog Universal Music Publishing Group for over $300 million. Later, he sold his recording catalog to Sony Music Entertainment for an undisclosed amount between $150 and $200 million. Stevie Nicks is an example of an artist who didn't sell her entire catalog. She sold an 80% stake of her songwriting catalog to music publisher Primary Wave for $100 million. The sale included the licensing and royalties of some of her and Fleetwood Mac's biggest hits like Landslide and Edge of Seventeen. Weeks after the Springsteen deal broke, news of Shakira selling the rights to her catalog broke as well. 
Shakira sold the publishing rights of her 145 song catalog to Hypnosis, which is a London based investment firm. Hypnosis is actually part owned by legendary producer and composer Nile Rogers. Since launching in 2018, Hypnosis has raised £1.2 billion from investors and has acquired more than 120 catalogs. Shakira said about the deal Being a songwriter is an accomplishment that I consider equal to and perhaps even greater than being a singer and an artist. At eight years old, long before I sang, I wrote to make sense of the world. I know Hypnosis will be a great home for my catalog. There's speculation that several artists who chose to sell all or part of their rights to their music, especially in that 2020-2021 time period, were partly influenced to do so by the pandemic. This assumption makes sense as artists knew they would be unable to tour for an unforeseen amount of time, and touring primarily is how artists make their money. According to The Guardian, artists like Dolly Parton have even considered selling their rights to their music as part of their estate planning. This is because it's much easier for someone to inherit the liquid cash the catalog is worth rather than going through that process after the artist they're inheriting from passes. Dolly controls the rights to over 3,000 songs, including I Will Always Love You, both her version and the covers, the most popular, of course, being Whitney Houston's 1992 version. Dolly spoke about this consideration in late 2020, saying she didn't want to be an artist who passed away without their affairs in order. She told Music Week, I've owned my own publishing company for years and years. It's very possible that, for business reasons, estate planning, and family things, I might sell the catalog I have now. I've often thought about it, and I'm sure that I could get a lot of money for it. Dolly has said, though, that she wouldn't give up complete control for publishing or forfeit her credits. Though there are several logical reasons why legacy acts would sell all or part of their catalogs as their careers near their end, there seems to be surprise and confusion as to why younger artists are selling their masters. Like I said, across the board, artists aren't making as much money off their music as they would have a couple decades ago. And I think a lot of the younger artists who are selling are at a point where they're still very much household names, but the days where they're more consistently topping the charts may be behind them. And for others, music is no longer their primary focus. Last year, Future sold the majority of his publishing catalog to the investment firm Influence Media Partners. The deal included his recordings from 2004 to 2020, which is over 600 songs. According to Pitchfork, Influence Media Partners has purchased the publishing rights to songs, but not the entire catalogs of artists including Bruno Mars, Dua Lipa, Ariana Grande, and Justin Bieber. I'm not sure what percentage of the catalog Future sold, as it just says majority, but regardless, it means Influence Media now has control over its publishing for those songs, and a deal said to be worth about $75 million. Future said about this, I put everything into my music, and I wanted to make sure these were in good hands as I thought about the next chapter of these songs. I'm proud to partner up with Renee and the team at Influence Media and send a signal that this music has timeless value. My music is my art and these songs represent some of the most precious artwork of my career. Future isn't the only rapper to have sold part of his catalog recently. Dr. Dre, Nelly, and Metro Boomin, who's a producer technically, have all sold a portion of their catalogs too. Nelly sold 50% of his recording catalog to Harborview Equity Partners for $50 million. Metro Boomin sold a portion of his publishing catalog to investment firm Shamrock Capital for about $70 million. Out of these deals, Dr. Dre, of course, got the highest payout, inking separate deals with Universal Music Group and Shamrock Holdings, worth an undisclosed amount that's somewhere between $200 and $250 million. Reportedly, the portion of Dre's catalog he sold brings in around $10 million a year. Inky Azalea was the first artist I personally saw in the news, aka Twitter, let's be honest, for selling her catalog mostly because of the criticism and the jokes that ensued. In November of last year, Iggy sold her shares of her publishing catalog and her master's recording to Domain Capital Group for an undisclosed eight-figure amount. The deal is said to also include an additional trigger for her to earn future revenue on master's recordings. In response to concern a fan expressed over Iggy selling her shares of her music, she tweeted, I sold a portion of my catalog to who I wanted for an amount that means I don't have to work another day in my life. I love y'all down, but the master's conversation is a little bit beyond most of your understanding of business. She also pointed out that selling her master's was different from Taylor Swift's situation, which is what most people think of when they hear master's. But Iggy sale was different in that it was her decision and she profited from it. In a follow-up tweet, Iggy said that she chose to do this because she has a larger business she wants to invest in. I'm not sure what business she was referring to, but Iggy does own her label, Bad Dreams Records, through which she put out her last two albums, In My Defense and End of an Era. Around the time End of an Era came out, which was August of 2021, Iggy was considering taking a break from music to work on creative projects. Just a year after making that announcement, Iggy did announce her return to music on Twitter. At the beginning of this year, Iggy kicked off her project Hotter Than Hell, which will culminate in her fourth album. The year-long multimedia project will also involve poetry, illustration, photography, videos, and music. 
Additionally, there's also some content to accompany the project that's available on OnlyFans, which I believe will also be released as a coffee table book in December. The project is said to be inspired by 90s models and sex symbols like Pam Anderson and Sex, which is Madonna's coffee table book that came out in the 90s. Just a couple months ago, Iggy released Money Come, which I believe is the project's first single. It samples K7's 1993 hit, Come Baby Come. In February of this year, news broke that Justin Bieber sold his back catalog, meaning all of his music released before 2022 to the aforementioned hypnosis. For his back catalog, Justin was paid north of $200 million. According to Merck Mercurianis, Hypnosis' the CEO, the acquisition ranks among the biggest deals ever made for an artist under the age of 70. At the time of the acquisition, Justin had almost 82 million monthly listeners and over 30 billion streams on Spotify. In all, Justin sold 100% of his share of his publishing and performance rights, master recordings, and neighboring rights for his entire back catalog of over 290 tracks. Variety noted that by 2023, the blitz for buying catalogs had died down some. Part of the reason is because artists' asking prices have risen as they realize it could be a lucrative next step in their careers. Additionally, interest rates and capital gains taxes have increased, but still, this doesn't mean that artists have stopped selling their music catalogs or their rights altogether. About a month ago at the end of September, Katy Perry sold a portion of her catalog to Litmus Music for $225 million, the biggest catalog sale for a solo artist this year. According to Complex, the deal included Katy's shares in her master recordings and publishing for her albums released between 2008 and 2020. Currently, that includes all of her albums except for her self-titled Christian Contemporary debut album. Dan McCarroll, the co-founder of Litmus, said in a press release, Katy Perry is a creative visionary who has made a major impact across music, TV, film, and philanthropy. I'm so honored to be partnering with her again and to help Litmus manage her incredible repertoire. Katy Perry is someone who, while still in the public eye, hasn't put out a lot of new music lately. Her most recent album, 2020 Smile, underperformed commercially, and I'm never going to stop telling you guys that there are a lot of great songs on that album. Other than Smile, Katy's released a few singles in collaboration with artists like Alesso and Thomas Rhett, and Harley's in Hawaii seeming to be having a little comeback moment. But mostly, Katy's been occupied with pursuits outside of the studio, many of which are still related to music. Katy's been a judge on American Idol since 2018, and as of July, her $25 million salary makes her the highest paid judge on the panel. On November 4th, Play, her Vegas residency will end, which so far has brought in an estimated $46 million. And then Katy also has her shoe line, Katy Perry Collections, known for its colorful and somewhat polarizing designs. Aside from their website, the shoes are sold at retailers including Macy's, Amazon, and Nordstrom. Katy Perry Collections launched in 2017, though Katy only became its sole owner in 2022 after Global Brands Group, Katy's original partner, filed for bankruptcy. All of this, combined with Katy selling her shares of her music, has made her one of the country's richest self-made women. In mid-September, Forbes reported that her net worth had increased to $340 million. Like several of her peers, Katie seems to be transitioning into more of a businesswoman role than just a recording artist. In August, she announced she's begun writing new material, but it's unclear whether a new album is on the horizon. However, that same month, she said at her residency, If you couldn't love me in my Witness and Smile eras, then you can't love me in my KP6 era. But still, as exciting as a new Katie album would be, that doesn't really indicate when it is coming. Artists selling their catalogs is always a gamble because there's no way of ensuring the money they take up front will be more than the royalties they may have made in the future. On the other hand, an artist's decision to sell their music or not sell it is not solely a financial one always, but also a matter of morals and principle. Some artists are of the belief that they should own all of their work no matter what, or more so in the case of a major label artist, own as much of it as possible. In a 2018 interview with Pitchfork, Mariah Carey revealed she almost signed away her catalog for $5,000. As someone who has written and composed almost every song in her discography, this obviously was a terrible deal for her life's work up to that point, even for songs that weren't yet hits, Mariah said. I had seen documentaries about the Beatles selling their publishing or having it stolen. I had always written songs and when I was around 18, I was offered $5,000 for all my music and I was like, no. All these songs that ended up becoming number one songs later after I got my deal. Now her catalog is worth millions, though I couldn't find an exact number, likely because her catalog has never been sold, only moved. Mariah also refused to give away those early songs to other artists to record because she believed in them so much. Mariah also owns all the master recordings of her songs, that includes 15 studio albums, 86 singles, and 19 number one singles, 18 of which she has writing credits on. However, Hypnosis did acquire We Belong Together as they acquired the catalog of John Tay Davis, one of the song's writers. But again, they just have the song while Mariah owns the master recording of the number one hit. 
Kanye West was an artist who was cautioning others against relinquishing the rights to their music if possible. In 2020, claims were surfaced that while Kanye was still with Rockefeller Records, Jay-Z sold Kanye's masters to Def Jam in an effort to get his own back. This masters included Kanye's first six albums, which contains classics like The College Dropout, 808s and Heartbreaks, and My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. Amidst the accusation, Kanye took to Twitter saying, Don't let the system pit us against each other. Jay is my brother. I have eternal love for all artists that have been through and are still trapped in this crooked system. Jay still doesn't get his own masters back for 10 years. I will see to it that we all get our masters. He also fired off a series of cautionary tweets about the importance of masters ownership. One reads, When you sign a music deal, you sign away your rights. Without the masters, you can't do anything with your own music. Someone else controls where it's played and when it's played. Artists have nothing except fame, touring, and merch. In separate tweets, he noted that in the streaming era, masters ownership was everything, especially during the pandemic, which is when the tweets were made, because remember, no touring. Kanye also accused Universal Music Group, who are the owners of the Island Def Jam Music Group, of not telling him how much his masters cost because he would be able to afford it back, which is what started all of this. All that being said, about a year after this, Big Sean revealed on an episode of Drink Champs that Kanye West had not given him his masters back yet from his time at Good Music, despite Kanye promising back in September when he made all these tweets that he was going to return his masters to his artists. Big Sean also said that he put out five albums with Good Music, meaning more than any other artist on the label at the time. As always, be sure to let me know your thoughts, let me know your feelings. Personally, I get why a lot of these artists sell their catalog. I could only see it potentially like being like, damn, if you know, you sold your catalog and then weeks, months, years later, one of your songs blew up and made a bunch of money. But I think honestly, if I got 200 to $500 million, I would just be cool with that and make my peace with it. And I would especially not really be that pressed about selling my catalog if I was an artist who wasn't really writing their music or didn't get a lot of creative control earlier in my career, because I think I would just be less attached to that music in general. But yeah, I would be eager to know your thoughts, your feelings, your stance on it down in the comments as always so that we can chat. As always, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. That way you can stick around for more. Also, make sure you follow me on Twitter if you want to keep up with me there. And if you'd like to become a channel member, the link is in the video's description. Again, thank you all so much for watching. I love you all so very much, and we'll see you so very soon. Bye-bye.